show that goes for a swim in Lake Housemate on a weekly basis. And boy, is Lake Housemate getting deeper and murkier by the minute. Sean is out. Liam won £100,000. Now everyone fancies him, even me. And Ziggy and Chanel, well, it's on, off, on, off, on, off. I just can't keep up. But it all means that there is plenty to talk about tonight. <laughs> What do the housemates really think of Liam winning all that cash? We get to the truth of the matter by the power of body language. I couldn't think of one person out there that I think that money should have went to more than Liam. For the fact, he's just such a nice guy, you know? Ziggy versus Chanel versus Billy, plus Nikki versus Liam versus Charlie. What's really going on in the housemate love triangles coming up? We slipped around. Uh, I enjoyed it, not but... <laughs> Plus the psychology of being a housemate. How the deals, the fame and life beyond Big Brother is influencing some of the housemates every move. There is also the carrot of fame dangling in, in front of all of us, you know. And we test the housemates with our psych experiment number two. More in-depth psychoanalysis from the heart of the Big Brother house. As a water bottle, as a disposable water bottle, a lot of people come and suck from your bottle. That'll keep you watching, won't it? Um, all that coming up, but first, let's take a look back at the week that witnessed Big Brother's first ever breakup and makeup. Here you go. Oh, it is, it is. House notes. In the diary room is £100,000. What? I'm freaking out. What's going on, you lot? Would Carl, Jonathan, and Shawnee come to the diary room? Oh. Okay, I don't know what is going on actually. Tonight, just one housemate will receive this money. <gasps> what? But it won't be any of you. <laughs> Let me know. However, the three of you will decide which of the remaining housemates oh. will receive oh, this money. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> what? what, what? <laughs> I could do Ziggy. Who I else? Could do I'm Liam. just trying. Liam, actually. Liam. I could do Liam. I could do Liam. Yeah. We've decided. Yep. We've decided. We've decided. Chosen Liam. You deserve it. You're oh. I'm really overwhelmed by what's happened now. Um, I'm overjoyed. Yeah. I love you, baby. baby. I love you, baby. I'll be back in a minute. Oh, Charlie's out there flirting with him now. I better get my ass out there. <gasps> okay. Look at these two. Bloody Mary Ann's mortal. Charlie will change again now. Yes, yeah, she will. Fight this on with me and Nikki. She likes it. <laughs> Three quarter lips or denims? Denims. denims. Get the rip denims. This? Dark denims. Bring them on. Yeah. I don't know if I can be arsed with it, really. Yeah. You know, I like Chanel, can but you... she, she is a lot younger than me. Can you treat So, what do you do? People have been talking and saying that they think you fancy Billy or someone like that. that. And I'm not going to believe it, whatever. Well, I don't know whether to. And a few people have said Who it. Who said that? No, I'm not going to say. No, Why they don't think that it's, it's not obvious. It's a few people have said it. If there's something there, then we carry on after. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, I'm not going to get you out in this show, and I don't want to be out in this show. Mm. I'm simple as. Fine. And if you still feel the same way, which I'm sure I will after this, then we see what happens after. But if you. And if things change, then they change. My bad. Don't come in bed, please. Let's carry it on. We'll put the fun of it. It's Welsh. Yay! It was Welsh. Yeah. I can now reveal that the third person to be evicted from the Big Brother is... Shawnee! I can't believe it. Why did you say this? I can't believe it. Can I just tell you something quite funny? It's in that we both said, what did, what did Chanel just say? And she said, don't call me babe, please. But I said to Judy that, and she thought that I was saying it to her, so she's like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know I did. Anyway, um, so on the surface, all the housemates are saying that they're pleased that Liam won the prize fund, but is their body language telling a totally different story? And here to tell us the truth is behaviour expert Judy James. Now, Judy. Liam yes, won. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. Um, Liam won what the housemates thought was the prize fund. How is that going to affect their behaviour and their attitudes towards him? 
I think initially we all saw it made him more popular, didn't it? Um, and this is what's known as the Oscar syndrome. When you watch people at the Oscars, when you watch the nominees, they always have to look really pleased that another person won. Yes. And I think yes. that's what they were doing here. It was kind of, it makes them feel better. And I think they almost felt they colluded in it. It was as though they'd given him the award and the money that allowed him to have the money. So they were feeling quite They're generous. They were feeling quite good about themselves. Yeah, quite big and quite yes. good about themselves. And obviously it wouldn't look good to sort of look bitter about the whole no. thing. I think there's going to be a bit of a slow burn of resentment going on here, though, because um, it's a bit like when you give somebody a big present or you loan them a lot of money. Initially you feel quite generous, then after a while, and maybe it's just me, you start to feel slightly resentful. No, I'm with you on that one. Yeah, and then in the end you end up getting into a state that's known as aggressive ownership, where you're kind of watching every penny they spend or if they're nasty to you and things like that. So you almost feel that you own that person. They've got to be really so well Liam behaved. So Liam owes you. Liam you know, owes Liam you. owes them, doesn't he? Um, so Big Brother put a series of questions to the housemates um, about how they felt about Liam winning what is believed to be the prize fund. And um, you're going to analyse their body language for us. Now, we're going to kick off with Charlie. <laughs> Charlie. Um, in the diary room, and Big Brother has just asked Charlie what she thinks of Liam winning the money. I think it's I should have won it. I mean, I am joking, Big Brother. I think it's amazing. Do you know that? I think they couldn't have chose someone. The, the, I think they couldn't have chose a better person. I couldn't think of one person out there that I think that money should have went to more than Liam. For the fact, he's just such a nice guy, you know. <laughs> No, funny. I think I think most of the audience here might pick up what that action was. Do you think? Yes. <laughs> you it think was she amazing. meant it? What's she doing? It, it's it's leakage. It's incongruent. Now she's leakage. got a problem. Yeah, she's leaking. Love she's that leaking. she's leaking all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> it's a plastic chair, so she's all right. And she's got a big problem because she's intrinsically very honest. You know, she prides herself on speaking her mind. And what she's having to do here is to prepare this kind of mask of oh, I'm so delighted for him. And she uses two. Next, first of all, she does this what's called an expulsion of the truth. It almost bursts <laughs> out of her, where she uses the S word. You know, um, and we that, all went, yeah, that's what she's. Really that's what thinking. she's really thinking. Yeah. But you know, it, it gets it off her face, and then she can put the mask on. But she's still struggling when she's masking. Now, because she's so honest, it's a real build-up of tension for her. And that's what emerges in this in this leakage with the hand gesture. I mean, gesture. it's kind of quite manic. Can we have another look? Look. A picky. I should have won it. I mean, I am joking, Big Brother. I think it's amazing. Do you know that? I think they couldn't have chose someone. The, the, I think they couldn't have chose a better person. I couldn't think of one person out there that I think that money should have went to more than Liam. For the fact, he's just such a nice guy, you know? That's alarming. 16 times. It's a wonder she has skin left on her lips, really. <laughs> um, it's got a dual purpose for her. Firstly, it, it kind of corrects her speech. It's almost as though she's not allowing the truth to leak out. And the other thing is that it, it's almost, you know, when children lie, they know yes. their parents are going to recognise the lie, yes. so they face cover. Yes. And she obviously can't sit there like that, but this is a partial face cover, so it's hiding the truth she's as well. She's basically not telling us the truth. She's telling porkies. OK, let's have a look um, and see what Nikki really thought of Liam winning. <laughs> Obviously, um, Liam winning the money, or, well, it would have been a highlight whoever had received the money. Um, <laughs> now, extraordinary, extraordinary. I was, you know, watching that, even without knowing what on earth is going on, what is extraordinary? That's quite bizarre. She's in the middle of a sentence, she whistles and she farts. What's going on? <laughs> What's happening? She's, um, what she starts off by doing is a poker face. Now, what she does is, she does what a lot of people do when they're not telling the truth. She doesn't move, and that means you're not actually allowing your body language right. to give you away. So you kind of gag yourself physically. But again, this causes a lot of inner pressure because lying it causes loads of pressure and stress. And it has to emerge, it's a bit like a kettle boiling up and all the steam coming out. So and she's literally whistling like a whistling boiling like kettle. A kettle. <laughs> You know, a lot of people, so a lot of people kind of puff when they're stressed, but she's like... <laughs> <laughs> but then we've got the best bit, which the is the raspberry. I mean, it's wonderful. <laughs> which, as we know, is mimicking a certain bodily function and showing what she thinks of the fact that he's won the money. But you'd think she'd be happy, of all people. Anyway, um, OK, let's have a look at Jerry. <laughs> There was no possibility in my mind that it could, I could have been the winner, so I'm not missing it. It didn't affect me at all. I thought it was quite funny that the money was on television for us to see. Um, and uh, I, do, I really cannot guess who was um, disappointed about the money 
being lost. Some, some people might have been, not me. I can categorically say that with... Because I never thought I'm, I'm the kind of person who has the mass appeal in the public and becomes a winner of, of this huge game show. But now it's not a game show. What, what's, what's happening there? What's happening there? <laughs> He says, I cannot guess who would not be disappointed at losing the money. And his finger actually gives us the answer. It's absolutely fascinating. Look. Look who he's ah. pointing to. Me, I would be the one. This is called the finger of truth. So although he's saying one thing, who would miss the money? He thinks he should get it. He's actually no, giving really? us the answer. Yeah, pointing to himself. I the biggest giveaway that. here, it's that's not even leakage, that's just yes, floodage. Yes, that's just floodage. <laughs> floodage. And, and anything else we should be looking out for, Well, Jerry? also, I mean, he, he's a gesticulator by nature, but his gestures become what's called over-congruent, and when we really want to be convincing, he's using this emblem gesture. Now, they're yeah, normally that. used instead of speech, so we use them to signal to people, but he's using it with speech, so it's kind of over-egging the point. And when so he uses his hands, something. he uses both fingers. Now, this is employing both sides of the brain. It's quite unusual to use both fingers. My Normally only does that when he dances. Four, I'd better be careful what I say now, then, yeah. haven't I? Yeah. But generally, it's politicians when they really want to make a point. Asserting themselves. Very much asserting themselves. And they're themselves. not telling the truth? In Probably your husband's not. case, that's not true. But in everybody else, yes. <laughs> um, OK, so anything else to look out for? I think really it's just it's just watching for all of the different signs coming out. You know, I think they're all saying, I don't care, I'm really glad he's got the money, but I think, you know, he needs to watch his back. So is anybody happy for him at all? I don't think so. I don't think it would be natural for them to be happy because this is their prize money after yeah, all. I suppose, yeah. But, you know, yeah. as I say, they're all saying they are, but there's some leakage coming out that is actually very suppressed. There's aggression, there's resentments. So he's got to watch he's his back. He's got to watch his back in the future. Watch his back. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much. Judy. Thank you. Still to come, proper science psychoanalysis of the housemates. Scary stuff. I'll see you in a bit. You are watching Big Brother on the Couch. Now, throughout the series, we're going to be running psychological experiments on our housemates, and they're designed to tap into their inner thoughts and feelings. And on Friday, Big Brother ran experiment number two, which was devised by Cecilia De Felici. Hi, Cecilia. How are you? Hey, I'm very well, thank you. So tell us a bit about the experiment. Well, what we did was we got all the housemates to find an object in the house that they thought best symbolised or represented themselves. And they had to show this object to the other housemates and hear what the other housemates had to say about it. And then at the end, they got to say why they'd chosen that object. And so what, what was it designed to reveal? Well, we wanted to get, again, inside their minds a little bit more, find out what was really going on. And by choosing an object, it's kind of like saying, OK, I think this is, says a little bit about me, but it also got us a chance to see what the other housemates thought of that and whether those actually matched, whether they were congruent, in other words. And some of them were very honest, weren't they? And quite... Yeah. Oh. Anyway, we're going to focus on um, Ziggy and Billy tonight. Yes. The Clash of the Titans. Um, so let's kick off with Ziggy's presentation. So he chose a water bottle like this, um, which was from the swimming task, wasn't it? Um, as the object that represents him. So let's have a quick look. The water bottle that, they, that they give us with our names bottle. on. A water, water bottle. bottle? That they give, yeah, you know, the bottles with our names on. Yeah. It literally is, it's a water bottle, we all have one, so it means we're, I'm part of a team. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, we, we may argue and stuff, but we've, we've all, uh, the task is, is important to me, because it means we eat all very well. Um, it also, it keeps, it reminds me of keeping fit. It's a sports bottle, so you've got the sports top. Uh, reminds me who I am. I see my name on it and my progress to get into this house. It must be quite uncomfortable trying to sort of talk about yourself. He does seem like he's trying to reveal something about himself there. Is that what you think? Well, Ziggy's really struggling with this. Before the task starts, he said, look, uh, we don't need to take much time over this. You don't need to say very much about me. And it's almost like he's trying to disappear. He doesn't even have the bottle. He doesn't even so have is, the So he object. doesn't physically have it because he they've taken it away because absolutely. it was part of the task. Absolutely. So he's using something that's not even there. Not even there. And it's very much, it feels to me like he's had a really bad week. He feels very low, very depleted, like he's running out of resources very quickly. And his, his bottle's invisible. It's like he's invisible. He's fading out of there. He doesn't and want the attention see -through. on him. It's, it's see-through. It's invisible. It's transparent. 
and yeah. all of that. And what's interesting about it is, is that we know that he's under attack at the moment. You know, Billy's come in and he's definitely making a play for Chanel. And Ziggy's feeling really guilty about all of that Chanel business. He's not really sure why he's in it at all. He keeps going on about how she's younger than him. He's very uncertain. Also, he's got another problem, which is that he's been in that house with all of those women, being the good guy for such a long time, and he attaches himself to Chanel. He needs a good object. He needs somebody good to be with in order to get through all of that. And it feels like he might be losing that. And Liam comes in, he's only been there for a few hours, and he gets a hundred grand for being the nice guy. And Ziggy's thinking, hang on, I've been a nice guy. I was guy a for nice weeks guy. And but weeks I suppose and weeks they and looked at it, they looked at it that Ziggy doesn't need the money, you know, and well, that Liam. Possibly, possibly. I mean, not that Liam necessarily needs the money, but that's how it was perceived. But Jonathan says something very interesting. He says about the bottle, look, you are giving out all the time with this. You're always filling up other people's bottles. People are always coming to you to drink out of your bottle, and you're not getting anything back from anybody else. And Chanel says, oh, hang on a minute. Yeah, every night he comes to bed, he's drinking out of his bottle. And I think that's her saying, he's getting so to nurturing she said me. That yeah. she's filling Ziggy's she's bottle filling at night. She's filling his bottle at night. Steady on. And when we look at the bottle, it's really interesting because this is a bottle which has got a it's little got a teat, teat on it. And you're going, mm. Now, what does that remind you of? <laughs> <laughs> He's sucking on something that's trying to give him something back. Now, psychoanalysts would call this a good breast. Kleinians would call this a good breast. Attachment theorists would call this a secure object, a secure base. And what we know about Ziggy is he really needs to have a secure attachment. And if he loses Chanel... He won't have one anymore. And he could walk. He's so very unhappy. So, importantly, let's have a look and see what Billy oh, yes. thought about Ziggy's representation... That's right. Thank yeah. you. ..of himself as a bottle. It's very exciting, this. Uh, I've actually personally been waiting for this one. So, uh, for the most, I find Ziggy to be the... Um, possibly the biggest uh, enigma in the house. I think it's easy to know someone, but I don't think it's easy to be understood. I think the water bottle is a massive deflection because it's, it's so see-through and you're not. At all. OK, can you just... What's going on there? What's well, going on there? I thought, isn't that... Is that nice? It's not nice. What, no. What's going on here is that Billy's taking Ziggy on and he's making this very explicit attack on Ziggy's integrity. He's saying, you're an enigma, we can't see through you. Now, this is coming from a guy who's got these massive shades on, yes. he's got hair yes. all over his yes. face. Who's the enigma here? So what we would say that this is a projection. This is about Billy projecting onto Ziggy a part of himself he wants to disown. He doesn't want to reveal himself to the other people on the house. But what he's also doing is he's undermining Ziggy. He's saying, come on, you're hiding from us. And if, funny enough, that is what Chanel thinks. She thinks he's being a bit two-faced, mm. doesn't she, at mm. times? OK, well, let's have a look um, at Billy and uh, analyse him and uh, see what his object was. It's my uh, sunglasses. Uh, I would wear sunglasses a lot of the time. Um, I definitely would like everybody to take, believe 100% everything that comes from my mouth and the eyes will leave for speculation and I don't want it. OK, OK, OK. So, firstly, let's just talk about Billy's representation of himself, his sunglasses. What's that saying? Right, well, it's very interesting because Jerry has a very good point. Jerry's a great um, psychologist in the house. He's like Jonathan, he's got lots of insights. And he says, look, you're putting up a barrier. We can't get to you. You're, you're making us come to you. You're not coming out to us. But Jerry also says, you've, pay, you've watched seven big brothers back to back before coming into this house and you're definitely playing a game. And we know that there's something quite Machiavellian about Billy. There's something about this is a game of chess for him and I'm wondering if Chanel's a bit of a pawn in this game. Uh, so you don't think that his affections are real, it's just a sort of using her to wind up Ziggy or...? Well, it's very interesting, because if we have a look at the board that he's holding up... Yeah. ..when he first... when he first Can goes... we, we that? got that? Yeah. Right, OK, when he, we first asked him to do this, the first thing he did was draw on his board Chanel's rabbit. This is Chanel's oh, that's rabbit. Chanel's rabbit! Yeah, and then he changes his mind and he goes for the, the sunglasses and all of that So he thing. was going to use Chanel's rabbit as yeah. his object? Absolutely. Now, what we might say is that this is an appropriation. He's saying, I'm taking a bit of Chanel and I'm going to have her for myself. Then he embellishes... Well, yeah, he embellishes this, bu this bunny rabbit and he calls it Slutsy. <gasps> Whoa! Well, what's he trying to say with that? Well, I think, again, he's appropriated Chanel, 
He's sexualized this rabbit. He's calling it slutsy. He's objectifying, in other words, Chanel. And what he's doing, he's doing this right under Ziggy's nose. And he's parading that picture. Look, he isn't is. it? He's kind of he's showing it off. He's so oh, parading oh, that so listen, so listen, I'm not seeing good things for Billy and Ziggy's relationship in the future. This is a real tricky one because, in fact, in many ways, they're very alike. And you would have thought that they could be friends. But the problem is that now the money's gone, Chanel is the big prize. And Billy is definitely after that prize. And unless Ziggy fights for her if you, you know their relationship's been so rocky this week unless billy fights for her she's got to fight for her what's gonna happen he's got to what's gonna happen i don't know oh thank you thank you thank you cecilia <laughs> thank you brilliant still to come who will reign supreme in the big brother love triangles will billy ever find his true love does nikki stand a chance with liam and what does the future hold for chanel and ziggy I'm going to the next part to find out. <laughs> Welcome back to Big Brother on the Couch. Now, no one, and I mean no one, that loves a romance more than I do, honestly. But quite frankly, I just can't keep up with the comings and goings of love in this year's Big Brother house. I mean, who's zooming who? Love is in the air, everywhere I look around. Love is in the air, everywhere I look around. Tongue! I stuck my tongue in his mouth. Did you? He loved it. I think there might be a couple more sort of romancy type things going on. I'll tell you facts as you, Nikki. Everyone in the garden keeps me like, oh, Amanda likes Billy, Amanda likes Bill and all this. I, I actually sort of thought he might fancy Amanda. Yeah, apparently it does. I really can't decide what twin I like better. Brian and, and Billy. Billy both fancy Amanda. And then they're like, oh, um, this love in the air with Amanda and Billy. I'm just like, what the hell? Brian fancy Amanda. Oh, shut up, the wire. OK, um, so let me get this right, right? OK. Brian fancies Amanda, who fancies Billy, who fancies Chanel, who, quite frankly, I'm not sure who she fancies now, so I'm a bit confused. So here to help us unravel this tangly love web is psychologist Thomas Chamorro Primusic. So, so, Thomas, Ziggy, Chanel and Billy, what's going on? Well, it's a very interesting triangle there. Uh, there is, it's a very strategic triangle, a very strategic relationship. We have... Billy, who, as we predicted last week, is interfering in that relationship. We don't know whether it's true love, true attraction, true seduction. What but do you think? Well, I think it's definitely... Siggy reacted very well in the beginning, pulling out and blaming Billy for basically his breakup with Chanel. That would have made him look like a victim and made him very, very popular. He could have stayed single and be very popular with the audience. But then he faces a dilemma because he wants to compete with Billy, so that's why I think we're seeing them on and off all the time. But so you don't think, you don't think Ziggy fancies Chanel for real? You think she's more of a status symbol in the house? Yes, I think she is a status symbol in the house and we have two people competing for her who are good looking but also incredibly similar psychologically. We checked their really? test profiles and there's 95% of similarity, which means they are more similar to each other than the twins. You're kidding me. It's incredible. It's like they are psychologically twins. So, I so if a viewer out there like Ziggy then they have to like Billy as well because they're very similar. Or if they decided to play a game with Ziggy, they might decide to, you know, bring Billy into the game because he's as Machiavellian, as clever and as willing to engage in this kind of triangle. Ah, OK. Well, how do you think Ziggy's coping with it all? I think he's... he's well, you know, it changes all the time. It's analysing this is like hitting at a moving target. <laughs> I, think, I think he has a dilemma. He knows what he should be doing, which is just let them go, but he can't let them go because it's too competitive. Does Chanel fancy Billy? Mm, I don't think she does, but she pretends to because she needs to find out a new story, basically. But can it's we just boring. talk through the shower? I mean, what's happening there? Just, like, hello? Yeah. They, uh, she must fancy <laughs> him. You wouldn't get into a shower with another bloke when you're supposed to be seeing another bloke if you didn't have this option Yeah, slightly. possibly. I mean, there certainly seems to be some attraction, but what does she want to get out of it? I think another story. She wants to be in the limelight, basically. Do you think she's going to stay with Ziggy? 
Uh, no, I think I think they're gonna basically break up, but you know, stay friends because otherwise it will reflect badly on themselves. It would show that it's either not real or you know that it would make the other person a victim, basically. Okay, let's move on to another triangle. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Charlie, Nikki, and Liam. Fantastic the other night. Absolutely brilliant. Let's have a look. Going into the Big Brother house, sir. Charlie. This house is going to change drastically and it's going to be really good. I think Liam's the best looking. Is Liam single? Has he got a girlfriend? 25 you, no way. We slept around. Uh, I enjoyed it enough, but <laughs> it's uh... <laughs> Do you actually fancy him? Yeah. Do you? No, just because I'd a shower with him. Charlie's out there flirting with him now. I bet get my ass out there. <gasps> Charlie! 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 Take from away, Charlie. Take from away. <laughs> No, no, no. Oh, she was... She was so blatant. I mean, brilliantly blatant that night, wasn't she, Charlie? But it was a competition. It wasn't even so much about Liam, was it? Yeah, correct. And this is a less sophisticated and less intellectual triangle, basically. I think it's, it's more emotional, more impulsive, and, uh, yeah, a very blatant approach. I think, you know, Charlie still has something to prove in the house. She's been underperforming with guys, and there you go. We've seen just now the sexual tornado on Liam. And, but, you know, Liam is very emotionally intelligent, very able to control his impulses. So yeah, but he's quite, he's quite impressed with Charlie. He did say she's tidy. I'm, I'm assuming tidy is meaning fit. Well, I, I wouldn't it... know, Davina. I'm not from here, yes, so I wouldn't know. It's a new <laughs> word for you to take with you yeah, today. We, thank you. Yes. We learn something every day. I yeah. think... We can compare Nikki and uh, Charlie. They're not as similar as Siggy and Billy, but they overlap in their sort of negative traits. They're both quite emotionally unstable, quite neurotic, quite insecure. Um, so I think they like Liam because he's emotionally balanced and down to earth. So he's a positive influence on them. I think Nikki's coming from a real place, though. I think she really does fancy. She says she stands there and whispers, "This is man hater Nikki." She stands there and goes, "Marry me." It's possibly the opposite to the other triangle in that they probably do fancy each other, but they have to repress this because it would have a negative impact on Liam. I mean, he has nothing to he has he has nothing to win with her. He's in a great situation at the moment. Got the money. Chanel is keeping Billy and Ziggy busy, so he has the attention for the other girl. It's risky to go for Nikki. Do you think, do you think he does fancy Nikki at all? I think he probably likes her and Nikki is getting good feedback. And for her, it's a great chance to show that because she's at the moment in this no man's land. She doesn't belong to the uh, not very attractive women in the house. Mm. She doesn't belong to the pretty man hunter. I remember so your chart. That's it, three weeks yeah. ago. So she wants an upgrade into the pretty group and Liam is a very good opportunity He's for the that. doorway in. It is. So listen, what do you think Nikki can do to make him fancier? Is there anything? I think she has to definitely avoid Charlie's approach, be more subtle, be friendly and tempting. And I think it's good for them if they flirt, but they don't commit to spending two or three or even four weeks together as boyfriend and girlfriend, because that would impact negatively on both. Do you know, I think that little piece of advice would be quite good to any girls going out. You know, <sighs> stand back, don't be too outrageous, don't be too outgoing. Not the scarf round the thing with the belt. No, don't do it. <gasps> OK, do you think that Liam and Nikki are ever going to get it together? Not, not in the house. I think maybe it would be after not that. your advice, would it? Because yeah. it wouldn't be good for, for the public's It might help opinion. Nikki a little bit, although it might make girls jealous. OK, Brian and Amanda. Yeah, that's a... That's a <laughs> Huh? That's a different High one. Hopes. That's a different Have you one. Got a little b yes. Oh, I couldn't uh, let you go without uh, another yeah. little board. We spent. I spent a lot of time actually tell. trying to analyze. Trying oh, to sorry, analyze. Oh, sorry. I thought you were going to say. Oh. It's a different one. I mean, we've analyzed the previous two triangles. Now yes. this one. The first thing to say is that it's the first time that we see one of the twins doing something that the other one is not doing. Yes. So maybe She's Amanda, out. who is a more dominant twin, is trying to, you know 
basically increase her individuality and her, uh, you know, become an item, not half. Now the other two, what do they have in mind? And we looked at the test, we tried to look at their profiles, we tried to analyze footage. I mean, what we thought is that what they have in mind for them... <laughs> well, for <laughs> Brian, basically, you know, it, it's Amanda, but it could be any of them. And I and, love, I love him. It's just ill yeah, of anyone. Billy, brilliant. Uh, he's brilliant. Brilliant. Billy, I don't think, and we couldn't put more, fit more people yeah. here, more women. But anyway, and for and for Billy, I think you know this it's is him. what is in his head. Yeah. Okay, and um, thank you yeah. very much to Thomas. Thank you. Bless Billy. He'll take anyone. He'll take anyone. After the break, how starring in a reality TV show in the year 2007 totally affects your game plan. I'll see you in a bit. Welcome back to Big Brother on the Couch. Now, back in the year 1999, a Dutch gentleman called John de Mol invented a TV show called Big Brother. Now, in olden times, it was widely defined as a social experiment. These days, many housemates see it simply as a fast track to fame and fortune. <laughs> Yeah. I am, and I'm not going to deny that. Talking about getting recognised. Yeah. It's going to be really weird, isn't it? There is also the carrot of fame dangling in, in front of all of us, you know. Tomorrow, our picture's going to be all in the papers. You've got to think about what the headlines are going to say. Oh, Who gosh. would do, like, an FHM shoot? Yeah, definitely. I think I understand the twins now, what that's about. I'm girly, don't you think? They're after more fame and fortune than experience. They're the slickest marketing machine in here. I can imagine it being Sam and Amanda dolls by Christmas. I'd like to be the manager, please. OK, joining me now to talk about the psychology of being a housemate, a psychotherapist, Rachel Morris, and columnist from The Independent, Johan Hari. <laughs> OK, so... Why... Johan, why are the housemates so obsessed with life beyond the programme? Well, they don't go in to be housemates. They go in to transform their lives after they've been in the house. The reason why they put up with all the being constantly monitored, all the invasion of privacy, all the kind of misery of it, is because they're constantly picturing what happens next. And they have a, frankly, delusional picture. Yeah, they where they, do. They think of the three Big Brother housemates who've really gone on to become successful in an enduring way, Brian, Kate and Jade, although Jade obviously imploded somewhat. She had a full um, grace. Yeah, exactly, uh, as you remember better than most people. Um, you know, they picture that and they imagine that that's typical. Actually, that's really atypical. Yeah. I mean, so f it's happened to so few people, but I suppose what happens is that you go in there thinking that you're a winner. You know, well, they, you're going you're to go in there thinking, well, I'm going to be the one person from this series... That's going to make a fortune. I think that's true, and they also have a bizarre idea about what celebrities. If you look at someone like Chanel, who's a nice person, she has a picture of almost religious view of celebrity. It's like you ascend to heaven. There's one magical day when you click your fingers, you are a celebrity, and from that point on, you are blissful and happily, happily live ever after. But we know she's come from quite a troubled place. Now. Definitely. Do you think she's trying to sort of? fill her spiritual gap with celebrity Definitely. That, that she's hoping that it will I, I heal think, her. I think all of television is filled with people who are trying to... Fill, uh, Not apart you, from Davina, you, no. obviously, who's no, a completely sure I am. healthy yes, status. No. I mean, we could be here for hours, but... <laughs> yeah. So tell me, yeah, so, I love so, so Obviously, I, th I think that that's the myth, that's the myth, that if everybody knows who you are and everybody knows your name, you'll never be lonely again. Well, actually, but as yeah. anybody will tell you who's actually worked in television and, or, or become famous, that's the loneliest status. Yeah. Well, there's actually that awful Robbie Williams lyric, isn't there? You know, I wouldn't be so alone if they knew my name in every home. Yes. That is the celebrity delusion, and it's completely like wrong. You know you're Robbie Williams. I know. Yeah. Okay. OK, now listen. I'll start um, singing Angel in a minute. Stop, stop. <laughs> every single housemate is given um, what, what we call in Big Brother the talk of doom. It's spectacular. It's real doom and gloom stuff. Um, and it's basically warning our housemates of the pitfalls of being on the show. So let's have a look at this in progress. <laughs> I'm just going to talk to you now about some of the downsides of Big Brother. OK. Life in the house is quite difficult. It's a small space. There's cameras everywhere. They're in the toilets, they're in the showers. You'll be living with people that you don't necessarily get on with. There's no diversion, there's no escape. And that's intense. There's no... Don't that fun. 
At the end of the day, it's an unpopularity contest. You might be nominated every week. If you get evicted, that's the public judging you on your personality. You may be loved, of course, but you may also be hated. If you go into that Big Brother house thinking this is your ticket to fame, you'll be disappointed. If you're going into it thinking that you're going to be rich, that you're going to become a TV presenter, have a career in the media, that ain't happening. Now's the time for you to think about the impact it would have on your life. People will feel they have the right to talk to you whenever they want, or whisper behind your back or say horrible things to you. Anything that you've got in your life that you would rather remain private, there's a chance that that's going to come out in the tabloids. Do you know what, like, I'm not being funny, I don't give a damn what comes out, because my life at the end of the day, do you know what I mean? I wonder why she became a housemate. You know, already giving it a um, Chanel almost looked there to me, Rachel, as if she was sort of going, yeah, yeah, whatever, that won't be me. Absolutely. Well, it's selective perception. As human beings, there's so much information around us all the time. We have to filter it. So we filter through it so that we only pick up the things that we think apply yeah. to us. So when we were listening to the producers saying things like, you won't be famous and you won't be rich, they just heard, mm, blah, blah, famous, blah, blah, rich. They, they just heard that, you know, because that applies to me. It's and like the adults in Tom Brown. You know, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Ma -ma 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 -ma. Yeah, or, or the dog in, I was thinking of the dog, blah, 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 yeah. dinner, blah, 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 <laughs> walkies. So I think that that's what's happening here, is they're filtering it through. The Big Brother producers, I know for a fact, they really hammer this I mean, stuff they home. Really, and they give over them a piece of paper as well at the they end of it, They have to sign things with their families, yeah. because they're not even trusted to read it by themselves. You know, they're given every opportunity to be frightened by what the, but the possibilities are. But all they really hear, I believe, is the rich, famous... And so, OK, so the rich part um, for some of them has gone because the, the, the prize money, they think, has gone now. So they're just left with the fame mm. side of things. I think, that's, I think that's wrong. I think people don't play for the prize fund. If you're, if you're looking at it in a financial sense, if you're going to yeah. Big Brother to make money, it's worth bearing in mind, the housemate who made by far the most money out of Big Brother was Jade. She didn't get anywhere near the prize fund. She came fourth in the series she was mm. on. So if yes, that's true. You don't mm. make mm. as much if you win. Exactly. There, there are two ways for a housemate on Big Brother to make money. There's basically the initial flurry as soon as they leave the house. That's a one-off thing. It never happens again in your life. And you will get a burst of money. Some of them will get a very big burst of money, like the twins, because they have a huge market for lads' mags and so on. Some will have a smaller, but still, you know, so, someone will offer Carol some money to talk, you know. I don't think she's going to be getting an Who? FHM contract. But, you know, th maybe she will, I don't know. No, I think one of the papers will offer her 500 quid to, you know, right, okay. talk about cleaning yeah, yeah. products. But, yeah. the, but, the, but the other way to make money... You were really mean. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to be nasty about Carol. I like her. She, oh. I like Carol. Oh. But, no, but the other way of making money is to actually leapfrog, use, use Big Brother to leapfrog through in, into a sustainable career. Actually, that is much harder to do. Some, sometimes they can become TV presenters like Brian Dowling. It's really hard. Even he struggled to sort of maintain exactly. it. Exactly. So that is the really big challenge, to make it actually consistently make money throughout Easier your life. Easier for girls than boys. Seems that all the women have made money and the guys don't... There's a You've got a little theory here, haven't you? There's a structural advantage for, uh, for women in that... The market for... Boobs. <laughs> a structural exactly. advantage. I like that. Yeah, that. Structural Unfortunately, advantage. I almost certainly have breasts. So I'm not going to be offered any money from the FHM. But no, the, the, um, no the, the structural advantage is there's a lot of lads mags who want to pay for right. to see women. There's not that much of a market to pay for even Ziggy, who I would quite like to see, topless. Mm -hmm. There's not much of a market to, to show us that. No. So men, have, men, if they want to maximise their financial ability in the house actually are smart to get into a pair because men make money in couples. Ah, you look at Paul from Big yes, Brother 3. Yes, Paul and Helen. Paul on his own would have made have virtually made nothing. Yeah. No, you're Paul right. and Helen made a lot. OK, um, one of the things that really struck me this year, I, I, I'm sure you picked up on this, is the mimicking of Nikki from 2006. Mm. We've had um, Chanel and Charlie both doing it. Have, have a quick look at this. <laughs> Who is she? Who is she? Who is she? I'm telling you! I'm so cold! I'm so cold! Oh, it's so cold! Freezing! It's absolutely freezing! Oh, it's so cold! <laughs> now, to me, Rachel, I, 
uh, I felt that Charlie was slightly copying Nikki on purpose, but I felt Chanel was being real. What do you think? Um, well, the, the, but they're both very young women, and what that basically means is that in terms of sort of being behaviorally and socially skilled. They're still practicing their skills, their social skills. They're still learning. So sometimes what we do it, when we go into a new situation is we adapt or copy somebody else's behavior, something we've already seen successful. It works, so, yeah. Yeah, so if somebody, you know, if you've seen a mate of yours be really popular by telling jokes, the next time you go out with that group, you think, oh, this is the group that really likes me when I tell right. jokes. So you adopt somebody else's personality. It's a bit like borrowing a coat. You try it on for size. If it works, great. If it doesn't, try another one and as you can actually see Charlie looked very uncomfortable yes, she did she wasn't you see the difference between Nikki and Charlie because it's Nikki's personality it belongs to her there was no reservation whereas Charlie slightly holding back right and that felt a little bit more conscious didn't it than say Chanel who but didn't look conscious at all quite transparent and us thinking that she's trying to mimic somebody that was popular before is making her more unpopular on the outside I would imagine well what it does is it makes us insecure around her we say hang on we know you're not Nikki so yeah. who the hell are you um, uh, yes. Who is she? <laughs> Who is she? <laughs> Who is she? No, we have to do it more. No. More. Who is she? Now you've got it. Well, it feels quite good, actually, aren't <laughs> it? Um, climactic moaning, that's called. <laughs> I learned that before Ooh. on this show. Yep, yep. Um, okay, so media-wise, right, Johan, what advice would you give to uh, Ziggy and Chanel? Well, Ziggy has made a disastrous move this week. The voting public for Big Brother are overwhelmingly young women. They're going to identify with Chanel. And he's treated Chanel, I think, quite badly. Not only did he effectively dump her, he made it feel like it was her fault she was being dumped. So he was not only rejecting her, he was making her feel guilty about the rejection. That is going to go down really badly with the Big Brother voting public. I think Ziggy is just about smart enough to figure that out. And that's why he was quick to go back to Chanel. He's thinking, God, this is really not going to look good. But that's made him look even worse, yeah, because exactly. now what he's saying is, I can mess a woman around, I can draw yeah. her in, I can chuck her away, I can draw her back in again. But he's not clever, though. He knows what they're thinking on, the, on the, the, the public are thinking. He must know that that's not a good thing but to do. A, we won't like that, He's women. admitted that he goes in, he went in with a manipulative yeah. plan. He actually said, my brother told me, and I was intending to do it, to play women off against each other. The problem is, it, it, with any of the housemates that decide to go in with a game plan, is they don't take into consideration that they're going to get genuinely, emotionally engaged with mm. the other dynamics of the house. Nobody can plan how they're going to respond to other personalities in the, in the house. And that's why you cannot, you might go in with a game plan, but you can't actually live it one day to the next. Who do you think is going to come out badly out of it all? Oh, it's really hard to say. I mean, who'd have thought Nikki was going to come out of it so well at the beginning? Yeah. And she look how well she did. I think Charlie well, she's is a bit of a secret dark horse. I yeah. think she's going to come out. She'll yeah. be the one in Heat magazine. She'll be the one with the column. But, but if Charlie wants to do that, though, she's got, I think she's got to study what happened with Grace last year. Grace is a model. She came out the most hated woman in Britain and managed to turn it around. Yeah. But you do it by being incredibly repentant, saying, oh, my God, I looked at myself, I'm such a bitch, mm. what was I doing? I don't think, I don't think Charlie Charlie's going to do, do that. that. Exactly. <laughs> Charlie's know. not self-aware and self-critical enough to turn around the perception of herself. So I don't think she is going to prevent... Oh, there's a think. long way to go in this house. Uh, I think One she's major humiliation for her, and she could crumble. That whole exterior will crumble, and we'll see her as a very sweet and vulnerable young well, woman. I think the way she crumbles is by getting angry. I think she's crumbling every day, but her crumbling comes in the form of lashing out and rage. And I actually... I'm probably the only person in Britain, including her mum, who likes her. But no, I, no, 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 but wait, wait, yeah. wait, because we talked to the audience a little bit before, <laughs> and I have to say that when Charlie went in, I think that, got, you know, quite a few of my mates were saying, oh, no, what a nightmare. But as time's gone by, you know, it's like Carol said the other day, what you see with Charlie is what you get. She's almost incapable of people-pleasing. She can't yeah. do it. She's in, isn't she? She just so she's, she she's gone in at a level of reveal that the others are going to take a few weeks to get to, and so we start off by disliking her because she seems like she's too much. But the others will overtake that. I, I know. Think, I know I it's think, a bit early, early doors. But who do you think is going to win? Who's 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 displaying winning? I think potential? Chanel. Come, I think Chanel appeals to the Big Brother voting public. She's similar yeah. to previous people um, who've won. She could, I think she's also a nice person. person. I think Liam Possibly. at the moment is the yeah. front runner. I'd yeah. say Liam. But at you the know, this, we, we heard earlier on in the show, they could have resentments building up yeah. against him because he won the money, and people might but not like yeah. him. But also, people who tend to win are people who've gone on a journey. And actually, I think the person who's going on a journey now is Nikki. Nikki is thawing. Oh, I look forward she's, to that. Nikki is really thawing. She's stuck, her man hating is melting away in the face of me. She's Liam. melting, she's <laughs> melting. <laughs> Thank you so much to Rachel and Johan. <laughs> Thank you.
OK, that's it for tonight. More psychological analysis on the couch next week. And stay on your couch, if that's what you're sitting on, because Big Brother's next on four. And I'll see you on Friday for another eviction. Good night. Yes, indeed. The housemates get psyched up for a knobbly knees competition in a couple of minutes. <laughs>